five, four, three, two, one. How's it going, everyone? This is Frank Cavone, and we are live from the office. Thank you all again for tuning in to From the Office. We took a week off just for Thanksgiving. Hope all of you had a lot of turkey, a lot of stuffing, and if you're a uh, vegan, hope you had a lot of tofurkey. I'm here with my main man, Eddie Hotelling. How you doing, Eddie? It's good to see you. Doing good, man. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, of course. I uh, it's a uh, usually I. Uh, Say uh, I haven't seen you in a while, but yep. we were actually at Ninola in, yep. in Malta, New York, and you guys performed for the Carrie uh, Carrie Vilmore benefit. Yep. Yep. And uh, just want to thank everybody for who donated because I think they raised almost three thousand oh, dollars for that, great. which is great. awesome. And awesome. and uh, they're just Carrie and uh, that whole group of people are awesome in the mm -hmm. sense that they do so much for the music community and. Yep. It was awesome that everybody gave back. But yeah, how was your Thanksgiving, Eddie? It was great. Uh, spent time with my family. You know, that's what it's about, I guess. So. Nice. <laughs> do you have? A, did you have a favorite? Do you have like a favorite side dish or part of Thanksgiving oh, you like the most? Or uh, I don't think anything I like the most uh, this year. My sister made some awesome macaroni and cheese, though. Okay. I really like cool. that. Cool. Cool. Dude, mac and cheese is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Can't have enough of it. Um, but. Yeah, we have you here for a couple of reasons today, and and one of them is just to, just to mainly talk about music. I found uh, you guys actually through Pete Mason, and um, just keep on hearing your name in the Albany uh, circuit. And I uh, went to uh, my first time seeing you guys was opening up for Formula Five at the Putnam Place. Okay. This was 2019, Okay. Their last show there, but I first the thing that attracted me the most was the fact that you guys. The way you perform, it's it's, you know, where it's so easy to be clumped into the jam band scene. You guys stand out and have your own sound. How would you describe Glass Pony sound? Hmm. Well, I like to call it psychedelic rock because I think that kind of is a catch-all. Um, there's a mix of the heavy, you know, jam band influence, um, but there's also like an indie rock kind of thing. There's even elements of like post rock and funk and jazz. Um, nice. So I, I call it psychedelic rock. Kind of captures it all. Cool. I mean, and I, there is definitely uh, a lot of heaviness. Yeah. Uh, definitely, it's definitely psychedelic, and the jams are just dark, groovy jams. Yeah. What was I gotta ask first of all? How did the band get together? Because I, uh, you've told me stories, but what what is it? What for everybody who doesn't know, how did Glass Pony? Uh, be, con be conceived sure um we we started well we've we've all been friends for a while um we've known each other uh mostly from blue sky and delmar um but we were at a, a summer party um where there was music and shanda greg and i um just kind of jammed together late one night and we had a lot of fun and we were like let's keep doing this so we did um and this was 2017, and at this okay. point, um, Jeff wasn't in the band yet. Um, Greg had a friend, Nick, who played bass. He was a great bass player, great guy. Um, so he joined us, and we kind of grew from there. Um, and then it wasn't really for him. He does more uh, jazz, punk, different stuff. It, it, it wasn't for him. He was a great guy. Um, so we, we started looking for another bass player, and we found Jeff. Um, and that's just so what I so so with you guys starting in 2017 what was the first song that you guys wrote together um the first song we wrote was portraits portraits okay yeah yep. um i remember shanda and i were hanging out at her apartment um one day just working on a groove we came up with that and then i wrote um some lyrics to it and then we showed Greg, and Greg came up um, with the bridge, and then we all sort of, you know, it, it grew from there. Um, but it's pretty cool because the first song we wrote was really collaborative. That's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now, in the, and just in a general sense, is most of the music collaborative, and uh, how how is how does it go about um, with, like you said, Greg writing a bridge, or yep. does Jeff have a certain fill that he wants to play during a certain part? Is that something you recommend, or is there somebody kind of uh, just taking the step up and, and kind of just 
acting as a, like a leader in a sense no, yeah. to, to organize everything? Or? Um, no, it's, it's always different, which is cool. Um, I tend to, I tend, I write a lot of music, so I tend to um, come to the band with something that's sort of fleshed out, um, I'll have ideas, but more and more I'm just coming with a skeleton and everyone kind of puts in their voice, which, which I like a lot. Um, but we all write, um, Shanda, I don't think has really brought any songs to Glass Pony yet, but she's a great songwriter too. Um, but right now, Greg, Jeff and I will, will bring songs and it's different for all of us. Um, Greg and I have more of a fleshed out, um, song when we bring it to the group. Okay. Um, Jeff comes with grooves, ideas, um, and he has brought full songs. It's just, it's, it's just different for each of us. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So there's no expectations on anybody. It's just what the group ends up putting together in the end. Yup, and it's 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 like the songs grow, you know. Yeah. You play them live. Some sometimes you jam, and everyone kind of figures out where they fit in the song. That's cool. And and some and like something I I, I recognized is you guys harmonize on the vocals. Shanda mm -hmm. sings some of the vo uh, ver uh, choruses that you will sing as well. And yeah. You know, Greg will sing back up, and yeah, yeah. was everybody was that something that started happening right away, or was it as as people become more comfortable in front of the mic, it allows for a little more flexibility in what you're able to do? Yeah, I think it's more that. Um, I, I none of us are like trained singers, so um, we're kind of learning as we go along, okay. and. Um, same kind of thing you just sort of everyone just sort of as they get more comfortable they sing a little bit more find out you know what works for them um and as a band we like where that's going so we're starting to do it more um and even to the point where we're starting to like um kind of write out more in-depth vocal parts um that, that'll be featured on the next album um but yeah we just we didn't do it much at first. We're starting to do it more because it's fun. It sounds that's sounds cool. Pretty yeah. good, yeah. So uh, just just for a little timeline of Glass Pony, Glass Pony released an album in November of twenty nineteen. Yes. And that is your self titled Glass Pony EP. Yep. yep. Where was it? Where was uh, the that album recorded? And um, how did you guys come up with the collection of songs that you did? Yeah. Um. That's that album was recorded in my living room. Um which we call the stables. It's where we practice. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. It's, um, it's just a spot where we're all comfortable. Um, you know, as a young band, there's not, we don't have a huge budget or anything. So um, it's just nice to be able to take our time. Um, we took a weekend, uh, we set up everything. We, you know, hung out for the weekend and recorded all the, you know, all the tracks. Yeah. Um, in like three days, we did some overdubs after that, but, um, so that's how we did that. The collection of songs were just, um, pretty much the songs that we had. Um, we had started writing, um, you know, in 2017 when we got together, um, the songs, we started playing live and, um, they all sort of started getting fleshed out. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much the songs we had that were ready to be recorded. So, so that's great. Did. Yeah, yeah. So bring it. You already had something to bring to the table. It wasn't like you're creating and recording as you're going. Right. Um, now, right. is there ever a time where it's like you're in the recording process and you play a certain lick and you're like, you just chase after it or? Um. That's a good question. Not, not so much that I could think of off the top of my head. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the songs do develop, you know, sort of in the recording process. And it's funny, like, even even after, like, the songs on that album, some of them we play completely differently now. Um, so they, they, you know, grow a life of their own after they're recorded, even. Nice. So you mentioned that you, uh, you record everything at the stables yep. in your living room where you guys practice. Does it help that you have a background in audio production to be able to uh, have that freedom to do that in your house? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think so. I, I was able to, you know, set everything up and, you know, record it and mix it myself. Um, 
which I enjoy. Like we didn't have to, um, we didn't have to bring somebody else into the process. That's good. Um, it was just yeah. so it, it and and in a way, it just helps with your guys' schedule of being able to mm -hmm. do it when you want to do it. Too. Yeah, yeah. So how so bringing us just taking it back just a little bit. Um, it seems like music has always been a part of your life. Mm -hmm. Were you playing before you got into production, or was it vice versa? Yeah, um, like sort of happened around the same time. Um, I mean, I've always I've always loved music um, since I was young. You know, I listened to my dad's tapes, and just music is all I really cared about. Um, so I started playing guitar in high school, and. Um, I liked writing songs and I got a, a little four track tape recorder and started recording those songs. So I wasn't much of a guitar player at that point, um, but I sort of did it all at the same time. Um, I guess I liked the creative process uh, as a whole. So um, to get my songs down, I would get better at production and, you know, and as the production got better, I, you know, became a better musician and just sort of grew together. Awesome, and I gotta ask because what you were when when you started becoming more comfortable with it, um, using that 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 uh, track recording uh, four track tape yeah. recorder, um, did that make you want to go and uh, learn it as a skill and 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 uh, yeah. you know take classes for it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so at that time also, um, I was doing sound, uh, at my church. So I was, that was my first experience with like a board. Um, and at that, so at that time I had decided I want to go to school for this. Um, so, so yeah, I think so. That's um, cool. Yeah. And, and just a side question I got to ask because, you know, production is a lot of work and except, you know, it's your hobby too. Mm -hmm. For myself, sometimes when I'm creating, it is hard for me uh, to, not hard for me, but like, you know, you get burnt out from, from doing it sometimes when you're let's not necessarily doing it under the, uh, you know, for your your passion, like Mirth Films or, mm -hmm. or Last Pony or Brother Cody. Um, you know, how do you, how do you keep the fun factor in doing audio production for yourself when you're doing it for a living? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I just, I just like it. I, I like sound. I like making things sound good. Um, you know, down to if I'm sitting in the car in the passenger seat messing with the EQ just to get it to sound how I want it to sound. I just like, um, I just like sound. So if I'm helping someone else make, you know, their dream sound better, it's, it's great. You know? Hell yeah, man. And, um, well, that's cool to hear. And uh, just because, I mean, from the sounds of, especially the first Glass Pony record, it's, it sounds amazing. I love yeah. it. And I know a lot of other people do. Has there, I guess, has there been any track so far that you felt like the crowd uh, is starting to recognize and, and get to know? or? Um, I think Bali Golly is, is one that's that... That's a catchy <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's funny too because no one knows, no one knows what we're saying. If people just you know, latch onto the melody, <laughs> nice. Um, people think we're saying like, uh, "Polly got a cracker" or something like that. It's, okay, it's great. I love it. It's fun. Well, I, hey, I mean, I, we were talking before this podcast started mm -hmm. just about uh, how you like songwriting and, yeah. and songwriters in general. And sometimes, you know, where uh, a band could play a fire, uh, just riff that is just a memorable riff. You know, the power of lyrics, especially specific ones, can really shape a song. Mm -hmm. So with with your, you know, with Brother Cody, with, with, with Glass Pony, is that where, like, Bali Golly, uh, what is, what, where is that come into play? <laughs> yeah, so. Because to me, it is a catchy song, right. and, and it's not, whereas like a, like your, like Hypnos, to me, it's just like a, you know, I want to get in my car and I want to drive as fast as <laughs> yeah. I can down I-87. Yeah, yeah. Bali Gali's like, okay, it's a groove. Yeah, yeah. It, it's lyrical. Yeah, Bali Gali, uh, lyrically just came from, I was, uh, so the song came from Greg. Um, he had this groove that he showed us, um, you know, that was Bali Gali, and I, 
um, came up with the melody and the lyrics uh, to it. And it was hard. It, it was, it's, a, it's such a cool groove. And um, I was having a hard time coming up with it. And sometimes, and, and the funny thing about that is it's so simple, the melody of that song. And I think that's why people like it. Or that's why, like, it, it, you it's know. It's approachable. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so, like, I have, I just have this notebook where I just write random things down if I have uh, ideas for lyrics or just lines or just really anything. And um, I was in Ireland and I was in a town called Bali Gali and oh, it's a there place. was a palm tree. <laughs> yeah, no just, way. So okay. in my notebook, I had Bali Gali palm trees written down just randomly. And it, you know, as I was like messing around with this groove that Greg had and trying to come up with a melody, that, that fit and it worked and it just grew from there. You know, we started jamming together on it and it worked. Nice. And then we kind of grew it from there. So what is your guys' relationship uh, on the guitar itself? Like with 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 playing, because you you do play melodies, you do play some solos, yep, and and, and yeah. Greg does too. Uh, Greg yeah. plays a lot of it. Yep, and yep. Um, is it does it take pressure off you to have Greg there playing and filling sound while you're serving your purpose? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I feel that way about the whole band. Um, I Go think ahead. we all bring something. To glass pony that you know needs to be there and that wouldn't be there if they weren't there um and so yeah like i don't consider myself a lead guitarist it's awesome you know greg is great he's got the background in metal um yes yeah he has a background shreds, in metal. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah yep um and i i like playing leads sometimes uh but that's just not i prefer writing i prefer you know being that that part i, I like rhythm guitar definitely um, i like jamming um so sometimes I'll take a lead when we're jamming, and I do take leads here and there, but not. Um, I'm not the lead guitar player in Glass Pony, and I'm happy about that. You know, that's good. I think. I think well, we need works. you up there on the on the on the mic, so. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I just want to take a second because we got Shane. Uh, uh, Shane is a uh, awesome, dedicated uh, fan of Mirth Films and great, great guy in general. And hey, uh, he just uh, said that he uh, that you guys have awesome tracks and uh he loves portraits and uh um, oh, thanks yeah and uh that he yeah he follows you guys on spotify and that's i mean that is cool that you guys do give your music out for free because i mean in in today's age is that you don't your purpose is not is your purpose not to sell records and play live shows and like how does how does a band function and and try to generate some income yeah uh it's tough um, it's not about the money, but when you, it, it's easier to do more when you can make some money. Um, so I think we make, most of what we make is from shows, from, you know, shows. from playing shows. Um, and you know, the, the recordings, we just want people to listen to our music. You know what I mean? It's, of course. we're not, we're not making much on that and, and it's, that's fine. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and it seems like you know you've you've been since you've been around music all your life. You've you've been able to take advice and learn from others in other generations of local music scene. Mm. Uh, one of uh, the people that comes off the top of my head is Tom Perosi. Yeah, and Tom's well, the man. just Blue Sky in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. Where how did you find yourself uh, at Blue Sky, and how has that affected your life from here on out? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I want to say Tom has been. Tom's been so amazing with us. Like from the beginning, um, I think he saw something in us that we didn't even see. And he's just been so supportive and he's just such a cool guy. Um, but so for Blue Sky, I grew up um, literally down the street, like a minute away. Uh, so I took guitar lessons there when I was a kid. And then um, I finished college and I, I moved away for a little bit, but then I came back and I just went, I went to see if they needed any help and um, I started working there. That's awesome. Yeah, so, uh, that's pretty much it. And at the time, Greg was, Greg was working there already at the time. Oh, Greg was, um, okay. Yep, and then uh, Shanda is the owner there, Scott and Heather, um, their niece. So she was oh, also working okay. there um, at the time. And so that's where I met them too. Nice. Right around that time. 
And it seems like it's like a, 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 a click of a family there, too. It's just it's like... very, very much so. Yeah. That's great. And for those who don't know Tom Perosi, he was the bassist, is the bassist of Animus Sea Pods, um, uh, Raisin Head. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the Irish group you were just talking Get Up uh, Jack. Get Up Jack. He's not anymore, but... He, not anymore, okay. He was for a long time, yeah. But he, he uh, is a killer bassist and uh, j- just a huge part of the Albany, New York... And upstate yep. New York, New York uh, music community, and um, I do. I don't know. It's just cool that you guys even, you know, do the things like, like playing some C Pod songs yeah, in some yeah. of your shows, and yeah. and just like I, uh, I don't. I, I were you at the Mopod show? Yep. yep. So at the Mo, Mopod show specifically, one thing that I thought was really cool, Al Schneer of Mo, uh, at the end of the show said that the music still stands up. And yeah. that was so yeah. cool to hear from him. Yeah. And also, I was unfamiliar of the band. Mm-hmm. I went to SUNY Plattsburgh. I didn't know who the C-Pods were. I, I, I would look up old shows and see when Mo and would play there. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw, like, on the C-Pods, on the C-Pods, yeah, on the yeah, C-Pods. Yeah. Um, on, uh, what is it, Gathering of the Vibes, early, uh, early uh, festivals and... On the sea pods were on, yep, there. Yep. and they they were playing with the disco biscuits, and yep. it's just crazy that I uh, I don't know it's just crazy how I mean there's a lot of people I would say R H who don't know them who are influenced by jam band music yeah but, the, but they do play a super important role in this whole big picture that we all love yeah I mean even from playing down at the wetlands which is one of the most mm. iconic early nineties late two thousands uh, early two thousands music venue yeah. And um, being able to have him to talk to and shoot ideas off yeah. of, and and let alone play on some of your tracks, it's yeah, just, yeah. it's got to feel good. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, he's so genuine, and and he just knows what he's talking about, um, and he cares about the music, and and he'll just he'll be honest with you, um, and it's, it's just he's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So with. Also talking about Tom Perosi, uh, he has played on one of your new solo tracks that have come out in in Brother Cody. Yeah. So before we go into uh, that, what is Brother Cody? Separate, uh, separate from Last Pony, and um, and how do you function sure. as a solo artist? Yeah. So um, I've always, like we were talking before, I've always written uh, songs, and I. I've always sort of, I had a band when I was in um, high school and college uh, called Scuttle. That was sort of a jam rock band, sort of similar to what we do here Cool. with um, Pony. Um, but after that ended, I, you know, I kept writing and I, I didn't have a band. So um, I would, I put out a solo album in 2009, I think. Um, it wasn't called Brother Cody yet, but it was the same thing. Uh, it's just my solo project, um, and I had you know. After that, I kind of focused on engineering a little more for a few years. Oh, cool. um, but I kept writing, so I have all these songs, uh, and then Glass Pony started, and right around the same time, I had a collection of songs that I was wanting to record as a solo. Um, so I started calling it Brother Cody around then. Yeah, um, Cody was my dog growing up <laughs> oh i was yeah. gonna ask it so, okay so he's your yeah, dog yeah he was my dog or my family's dog growing up uh, and he was like a brother to me so i thought it was a cool name nice um, so are you an only child or nope i've got a sister got a si- oh yep. yeah got it yeah yep. <laughs> um just the two of us and uh yeah so and he was really important to our family and i just thought it was a cool name yeah um so it's it's just separate from from pony um you know, there are some songs, like we play a song called Northbound that originally was um, a Brother Cody song. I was going to put it, I had planned on doing this Brother Cody album that I just, just never came together. So I'm just doing singles at this point. Um, but that was one of the songs that was going to be on it. Um, so it's a separate thing. I basically just write too much and I, you know, need another outlet. Which is not bad. No, no, no. I love it. It's, it's fun. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's not like... Yeah, it's just overflow basically. And and you've and you've performed as Brother Cody uh, at places like Indian Ladder, right? Or um, not Indian Ladder. I've done a Perfect Blend. Oh, Perfect Blend. Okay. Yeah. Which is a great coffee shop in Delmar. Yeah, yeah, amazing, definitely amazing go. place. Um, 
Parish. I've opened up for Girl Blue a couple times. She's oh shit, amazing. She's my favorite artist in the area. Like, and I'm not to say anything bad about any other artist, but she's just incredible. She's an yeah. amazing songwriter. Um, so that was an honor. It was a couple times doing that. So I haven't I haven't done too many gigs. I'd like to do more in the future. Um, nice. Yeah. Well, at least you're spending your time wisely recording music, writing music, yeah, yeah. being influenced by the times that we're living in. And it's great to, to hear just uh, two different sound elements in, in, in the groups that you're uh, uh, just involved with. And it, 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 does, do, you have to, do you separate your mind or is it just it comes out naturally one way or this way? And because of you don't have three under other band members... Or you know you have four band members that are creating a whole different sound, and you right, gotta right. you gotta kind of just make more sound from your just your voice and guitar. Sure. Um. Yeah, not necessarily. It's I, I don't think of it. I kind of write the way I write, um, and then like when the song is sort of started or done, I'll start to think about um, should this be for Glass Falling or should this be for Brother Cody? Um, yeah. Like, I wrote this song during quarantine that um, was very, you know, it was acoustic guitar based. It um, it felt like it was going to be a Brother Cody song. Um, but then I showed Jeff and he loved it. And he was like, we, you know, he wanted to do it. So I was like, okay. So, so we uh, kind of rearranged it and now it's a song that, you know, actually we just played for the first time in Malta at that, um, oh, okay. at that benefit. Um, so sometimes I don't like I didn't even you know, I just write the songs and you know it goes where it goes. Nice man. Yeah. So with that, I mean, you do have a new track that you will be releasing. Yes. Tell me about it and tell sure. me about just the artwork you sent me because it's freaking awesome. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, the artwork is awesome. Um, so it was it might have been a different trip to Ireland. Uh, um, either way, I met I met someone in Ireland. Um in 2018 in Galway, which is amazing. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, it's such a cool city. Um, just music everywhere, all the time. Wow. It's just awesome. Um, but I met this girl, Maud, who makes these really cool, like, abstract um, drawings. And and I just, I reached out to her to see if I could use, you know, one of them for the artwork, because I liked it a lot. Yeah. And she's, she was awesome about it. Um, so yeah, she's on Instagram. Um, maybe we can link it or yeah, you know, definitely check out. we'll put the link in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just very cool art. Just very abstract. I like it. It's yeah, like yeah. fractal, yeah, like yeah. window pane style. Yeah, I don't even know what to call it honestly. Yeah, it's just really cool. Yeah. But the track itself. Yep, yep. Tell us about it and uh, where when when is the release date for it? Sure. Yeah. So um, it is coming out next Friday, December 11th. Um, on all streaming platforms, Bandcamp, um, you know, all the normal places. Cool. Um, so that was the first, so I had started planning an album as Brother Cody. Um, I talked to Tom, I talked to Scott, I talked to um, Drew Costa um, about, you know, those guys playing on these songs and they were all awesome. Uh, and they were gonna, you know, record them with me. And it, it never happened just for, you know, time reason yeah you know, people happen, get busy yeah. but um yeah. so this was one of the songs that was in that that group and it's a song about the day my sister got engaged and she was um she got married in in 2018 um in october so i wanted to give her the song as as a wedding gift um so i asked the guys if we could record just that one song first you know and then get to the rest after um so so we did. Um, so Scott Apicelli played drums, Drew Costa played keys, um, and Tom Perosi played bass. And they're all just some of the best musicians around. You know, they're incredible. Yeah. Um, so we recorded that song. Um, I, I recorded the vocals, did a quick mix. This is like, you know, a couple days before the wedding, so I had to like get it get it done. Um, finished it up and gave it to her as a gift for the wedding, and then. Um, that's about it. You know, it sat around for a while. It was, it was a gift. Um, and you know, it was originally, I was planning on putting it on the album. Oh, um, nice. So when quarantine happened, I had some time, um, to sort of finish it up. I, I ended up, um, 
you know, rearranging a little bit, adding some different vocal parts, adding some um, lap steel, uh, some electric guitar, percussion, just things like that, and uh, remixing it and just finishing it off. And um, I just wanted to start putting out this other Cody stuff because I've, I've got just tons of songs that, um, you know, maybe Pony will play them sometime, but, um, but maybe not. So yeah. I just want to just get it out there. Why not? That's good, man. Have, yeah. a, have your own platform for your own music. I mean, everybody should. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. So that's cool. And and do you I mean, do you have any plans to do stuff with the music, you know, live when things come back to normal or or um or is it going to be hard to do a wheel because I mean, you guys have grown mm -hmm. a lot as a band since 2017. And I and I just don't know how like sometimes it's hard to balance everything. So I just yeah. didn't know like yeah, yeah. you know. Um yeah, I mean, Pony is my, uh, you know, priority. It's, it's, I can't wait till we can start being busy again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to do some live stuff as Brother Cody. Um, Brother Cody for me is, is more, um, loose as far as who's playing okay. on, on it. Like I want to sort of experiment and play with some new people. There's, there's, um, just different things. Uh, it's a it's something I'd be comfortable playing, you know, a solo show just by myself with a guitar or or with a band or like as a duo or something like that. Whereas yeah. Glass Pony I consider the four of us. And and I think it's bigger than than each of us and I think um, that there's just something special about that group and I it's not the kind of thing where we do like a Glass Pony duo or like you know, like if you see Glass Pony, it's the four of us, and, and that's nothing what else. it is. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think that's important. It's important to me at least. Good. Um, no, absolutely. Whereas Brother Cody's a little loose, a little more loose. You know. That's good. Yeah. You know, and you always have. I'm not gonna call it a second option, but you guys, you always have something else to look forward to, um, on the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're a guitar player, so you want to play all the time, and. You know, it's great that you, you know, spend the time to write and it's, I don't know, would you say it's more, I'm not going to say is, well, yeah, is it more of a hobby than, than Glass Pony where is it, is it more of a commitment or is it um, all a hobby? No, I'd say it's all a commitment. Um, it's what I want to do with my life. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. um, so yeah, I guess there's a fine line between, you know, hobby and career once for sure you start making money i guess you call it a career but um i've always you know i've always felt like deep down that that i was a songwriter like it hasn't always been good or anything like that but but just i just feel drawn to doing that and i always will um cool man yeah. so just to switch things up mm -hmm. we have a twinkie right on the guitar yeah. stand here this Twinkie is uh, notorious for being in all of your performances and yeah, finding yeah. its way into shows, yeah, yeah. sneaking its way into shows, yeah, slipping yeah, yeah. through the plastic <laughs> wrapping. And what is the, what is the, I'm not going to say what is the point, but what, <laughs> how did, how did this thing come about? I don't know. Honestly, there, there isn't the much of a point. He is the mascot. Um, he, I was a kid and I, it was like a stupid thing I saw in the store and my dad got it for me for Christmas and, oh, and nice. so it's just kind of been hanging around for a while um, and so when Pony started it just started using it as a prop and people started noticing it and we're like eh, what the hell I like that's it. just part of the show why not yeah why not I, uh, I mean <laughs> like Formula 5 used to have a, a, a plastic duck on stage <laughs> yeah and, like yeah. there's like you know Twiddle has a Yoda or yep, whatever yep. robots but um, yeah. when I first saw it I thought they were fishman donuts. Oh. And, but but they but they are hearts. Yeah. And, yep. and now that we're on the topic of fish, fish is a huge part of your guys' lives. Yeah. How did you get into the band? Um, I got into the band from uh, my friend Keith, uh, Keith Drinkwine actually, who wrote um, "House on the Hill," which is a song that we play. Mm. Um, he was he's you know one of the best friends in the world and. He showed me fish. I think we were in Arizona in like high school. Um, I forget. I want to say it was Farmhouse and Picture of Nectar. Um, he showed me those albums, and I just loved it. And and that was it. 
And it's, I mean, for somebody, for anybody who's never been exposed to the band, at first, what were your first impressions of Fish and and their take on music? Um, like, what attracted That's a good you? question. Um, I honestly, I honestly don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, for me... something magic. Yeah. No, it's definitely something magical about the yeah. band. For me, it was my friends and who I grew up with, mm-hmm. around and... and and the community I grew up around, mm-hmm. and um, but your first show, where did you see it? What state? Uh, what year? Yeah, my first show was um, SPAC in two thousand four, um, six nineteen. So uh, I was in high school. It was it was the only show I saw on that tour. I wish I'd gone more, um, but it blew my mind. I mean. If you're not familiar with that show, check it out. It's incredible. Uh, there's this, you know, half an hour Piper, um, and that's just the highlight. There's like, there's a huge song I heard the ocean sing. The show oh, opened cool. with Reba. I mean, wow. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. Um, I remember specifically uh, two things really specifically. Um, the first set ended with Bowie, and it blew my mind because um, I, I was I didn't I didn't know all the fish stuff, you know, like like the way I do now. Uh, I didn't know Bowie. I didn't know Reba. They opened with it. Um, but the Bowie specifically just blew my mind. Um, and then during that Piper, there was this glow stick war that, again, just blew my mind. I hadn't ever seen anything like it. Um, it just lit up, you know, the sky in Saratoga. It was wow. incredible. It was incredible. Um, so I'll never forget that night. It was one of the best shows I've ever been to. So seeing them in before the band called the quits what was uh what was your first show seeing them back when they were performing and and what was the energy like you know now yeah yeah uh that's a good question um trying to remember what the first one was that i saw back um keith and i my my great friend keith who showed me them we we hit like five shows that summer um i don't remember which one was first but we did camden Oh, cool. uh, we did the SPAC shows. We did um, we did Jones Beach. Um, I honestly don't remember what the first one was back. I remember where I was um, when I heard they were getting back together. Yeah. Um, and what was the feeling? It was it was just it was amazing. Um, cause like it was they'd broken up, you know, when I was in high school. And then, so when I was in college, I didn't have fish. Um, I would go see Trey a lot, um, Trey Band, and it was awesome, and I loved it, and I loved that era, but also that's kind of a sad era um, for Trey. There was a lot of great stuff, but it was also a lot of dark stuff. Yeah, um, of course. So when I got the news that they were coming back, um, I was just elated. Um, you know, so, so number line for me is a very special song because that, you know, they're like, we're coming back and they have this single. And so I listened to it and, you know, I, you know, I loved it. Um, so I think that song gets a lot of flack now, but I, I, I've loved it and always have. It's a great song. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. all of them could be heavy ragers. So, right. Right. And, right. And, and I mean, backwards out of number lines, kick ass. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I, I, it just like, I never, I, I didn't see him till 2012 and I just, I did I, you know, being able to see him in 2004 is pretty awesome. It's and awesome, like, com- compare and contrast for me, like the, the tones of what it was like in those early 2000s compared to what you hear now for Fish. Yeah. Um, or do you like, do you, cause I know like you and uh, Greg, you guys like a lot of like early 2000s, 99. Greg's huge in that period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, that's yeah. all I see from him. I like, I like it a lot too. I mean, my, I don't necessarily have a favorite. It's, it's different. Okay. It's different. Um, I like, I love the new stuff. I, I love, I love the way they're jamming now. Um, I love the songs. So, it's just different. Just different. Uh, yeah, yeah, for um, sure. Have you had? Do you have like a show that you always listen to that you've been to or not even been to or hmm. like for like I, I don't know. I definitely have like some that like Wal- Walnut Creek ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't That's get great. enough of yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and uh but yeah what like what is your like you got one show to listen to uh, what are you gonna listen to that's tough uh maybe october um i think it's 25th 2013 it was a worcester show 
Um, that whole that whole 2013 fall run is just awesome. I've heard. Yeah, it's so good. Um, but that show, in particular, I just I love. I guess off the top of my head, if I had to pick one, but yeah. I don't really have like one show that I listen to. I like. Um, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. that's the great thing about Fish is different eras present different sounds and different versions of the songs. Yeah. Whereas, like, uh, I don't know, just like when you put on on New Year's '95 and you hear Weka Pog Groove, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. the most ripping, gnarly guitar playing ever. Yeah. And then you hear, I don't know, something from like Sigma Oasis that's yeah. just is just pure rock and roll, or like even goes to the forest, like about to run, yeah. pure yeah, yeah, rock yeah. and roll. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's it's a whole variety of music, and and that's what I mean to me. Like Fish was very attractable because it, it, I did feel like a rock influence from it where like they're they're widespread and and I uh, you know like ACDC bag hearing that for the first time and just yeah. uh, Axilla free yeah, I'm just yeah, like yeah, wow yeah. like how have I never heard of these guys yeah yeah and then just actually Greg Merrick from Formula 5 is the one who showed me Fish and he showed me Mound um, oh nice and okay. I, the, the studio version I was like it was like the only song I listened to Fish uh, listened to a fish for like three years before really? I really got into them. Okay. And then finally saw my, my first show, but prior yeah. to that, I was huge into thrash metal. And, oh, awesome. And the thing that I really saw that I liked the most about the band was okay, I love Kirk Hammett. He's a yeah. ripping guitar player. Yeah, yeah. His solos are so fast and gnarly, and whereas okay. like those notes are spread out over time in a fish song that are, and it's just the same, it's not the same thing, but it's just like. There's no, it's it's all that energy. The energy's there. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I'm very attracted to the guitar playing specifically okay. of, of the band, and then slowly I was just like, Paige, like yeah. hearing yeah yeah yeah, the guy is an amazing singer, and and just yeah. I love his his moog work and yeah, yeah it's yeah, great yeah. you know yeah, but what music have you been listening to throughout the pandemic? Have you like discovered new artists or? Huh? Yeah, I guess recently I've been listening a ton to um, this band called Bleachers. Um, there's just it's it's basically one one guy. I mean, he's got a band, it's sort of like a brother Cody sort of deal. Um, oh, cool! But it's this producer songwriter named Jack Antonoff, and I just I love his writing. I love his production. It's just some really cool stuff. Um, to and I never I never listened to him before. So recently I've gotten into him. Um, my biggest influence um, ever, other than other than Fish, is is Connor Oberst uh, from this band Bright Eyes. Okay. And they just put out an album over the summer. Um, so I was listening to a ton of that, too. Nice. Yeah. That's cool, man. Um, I mean, have you seen, like, in a trend of why people are releasing music now and, like, what they're writing about? Or is it... Um, or, like, how they're releasing? There's a lot of music coming out, which is awesome. Um, I think people are... There's an there's an undertone in a lot of the music of you know. It's dark or it's lonely in a way, but it's also hopeful. I, I think in a yeah. lot of the music that I'm seeing, but I think it's awesome that people are writing and that people are putting music out. Um, there you know during this time. It's, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I um, I mean I I I haven't necessarily I've been listening to new music being released, but I've been listening to a lot of um. I don't know, just music that I never got to before. Like I, I like I was talking to you, you know, I'll listen to an album and not realize three of the songs on there are bangers. And yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. how did I over, how did I miss this? And yeah. it's like, okay, put down Zeppelin two for just, <laughs> you know, a few months and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and open your ears a little bit. Yeah. And, um, well, there's just so much good music. There is, so there is so music. much good music. And especially in this, in this great city that we live in, in yeah, Albany. Yeah. Um, do you have any just people you've just been gung ho about listening from the area? I know you mentioned Girl Blue and yeah, Girl Blue. Um, uh, gung ho, I'd say just probably just her stuff. But there's this band Bent; they're awesome. Um, I just worked um, a show a couple weeks ago. Um, for this band called Front Fizz, and they were awesome. Oh, Front Fizz, yeah, of course, they were yeah. awesome. I didn't know they they're were pretty stuff energetic. Right? Yeah, very energetic. Great songs, great playing. 
um, great guys. It was that was a really cool band. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of a ton, but no worries, yeah. There's just so much good music around here. Definitely, I I mean I love the scene personally. I I I, I was always from I'm from the Lake George area originally, and and slowly made my way down here. And the one thing that for me that made it comfortable to be in Albany was the music scene, was the people behind the scenes, mm-hmm. was the people playing. Everybody I found super friendly and. There's, you know, again, there's a community here. There's, you know, you got the Parish Public House. You yeah, have yeah. Hollow. You have the bigger venues like the Palace and, and soon-to-be Upstate Concert Hall. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many there's so many genres of music, number one. But it's like you go to a show, you run into, like, nine people you've seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like you're at home. And, yeah. And that's what's great. And, and it's for those who are outside of the area, I mean... Albany has a lot of great stuff like Tulip yeah. Festival, Lark Festival, yeah, free yeah. community events, Alive of Five, that bring in bands big and small. And yeah. you know, if you haven't been to the area, I personally think that over the next ten years that this city is going to grow. Yeah, it just it has the infrastructure yeah, and yeah. it has, I don't know, all, the talent. The talent yeah. it has the yeah. talent, and I don't know, it's just a great place to to grow up as a kid. Yeah, but um, yeah, no. So last. I want to talk about is uh, you um, guys were recording an album over the summer. Yep. Fill us in about the ne- next gl- Glass Pony album and when, you know, where are you guys are in the process. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was July. Um, we went down, my sister lives um, in Westchester, that area. We went down there um, to record this album. Uh Sort of, you know, like I was saying, we did the first one, we set it up, uh, we did it over a couple of days at my house, it was just comfortable. Um, yeah. So we wanted the same kind of vibe, um, and this was this is sort of a secluded area, um, we were able to set up everything, um, we were down there for a week, um, recording the whole thing, uh, well, you know, all the basics and stuff like that, so yeah, it was awesome, it was a lot of fun, it was a great time for us to like, you know, bond, um, it wasn't just like we weren't just playing the whole time which is our favorite thing to do but it's nice to just hang out too you know yeah um you know we do a session for you know the whole day we we do takes um then we hang out and listen to them and make dinner and you know relax and that kind of thing so it was a really fun vibe um so we finished we finished all the basics we finished a ton of overdubs um a ton of vocals um we're very close to being done. Um, we've got some more vocal stuff to do, and we've got some keyboards to put down. Um, who uh, Matt Richards, who played keyboards on the first album, um, is kind enough to do it again. Um, awesome. And he's amazing. He's so good. Um, he's such a cool guy. Um, so he's he's working on this, learning this stuff right now, and then we'll get into the studio, um, you know, when he's ready. And and then when we get that done time to mix we'll mix it um and then jeff's got a friend in nashville who does mastering so we're gonna send it down there oh sick. um yeah yeah she does great work um and then yeah we're shooting for hopefully springtime um but maybe cool. early summer hey you guys aren't rushing it you guys <laughs> yeah, have yeah. all the time in the world yeah right yeah now. Right. why not just yeah make it to the fullest extent yeah excited about it cool man so just for the viewers where can you find Glass Pony and uh, just Brother Cody a- across the interwebs? Yes, yeah, so um, I guess glassponyband.com um, is a good central place to find all of our social links, all of our um, you know music links, all that. Um, but we're on Facebook, Instagram, you know Spotify, YouTube, you know all, all the all the places. Um, yeah. But if you go to glassponyband.com, it's all there. Um, Cool. You know, find us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, Brother Cody, I don't have, I have my own website. So if you just go to eddiehotailing.com, um, there's info there on Brother Cody um, and on Glass Pony. Um, so, yeah. Good man. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, everyone, please go follow, like, subscribe to Glass Pony, Brother Cody on uh, all the platforms, eddiehotailing.com, glassponyband.com. Um I know you guys have a lot in store, and I can't wait to see what comes from everything. You guys have been definitely one of my favorite 
just my favorite bands from the area for Thanks, quite man. some time now. Um, and just just working with you guys and you know giving us the opportunity to, to, to go live with you guys and just you know you even thinking of us to, to just be a part of uh, producing some of the video. It's just been amazing, uh, especially the, the video uh, of the album release. That happened that was at, so much fun. It just yeah, yeah. for me it takes me out of my element and uh it makes me feel I'm not not uncomfortable in a bad way, but it it challenges me and I yep. and like doing something creative like that was just so much fun and I hope like, we get to do something like that again. Oh yeah, definitely. And um just some of this even some of the songs like I've I've uh, like something got like there's like ideas that I had of like of like cool like music video ideas oh, and cool, um cool. and I just you know anytime you guys ever need anything please reach out you guys are family and um yeah and I want to say thank you to you man for everything you do for not just us but the whole scene thank you man. really yeah I mean, I, I got, honestly without you like I said it's a family oriented thing it is um and if it weren't for you guys playing on stage I would serve no purpose so thank you for just playing music man absolutely thank you so much. And thank you guys for tuning in to episode 8 with Eddie Hotel and the Glass Pony Brother Cody. Please stay tuned. December 11th, he's gonna be releasing, uh, Eddie's going to be releasing a brand new song. I've got to hear it. It's awesome. And um, it's just, uh, the artwork's amazing. So please just make sure to, to have that date, you know, on the calendar. And um, But other than that, we have many more episodes in store. And just with everything winding down, we hope everybody has a nice just holidays and don't, don't, don't go too crazy on Christmas shopping. You can always go support a local business. I was going to say something else, but go support a local <laughs> business. And um, as always, you can find From the Office on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Facebook. Thanks again. Thank you again, man, for coming Thank on you, the man. show. It means a lot, especially Absolutely. just in these... In these times where we have to be careful, please wear your mask. Yeah. And I'm just realizing I've been wearing my mask inside out this whole time. But it's okay. It's <laughs> yeah, covered. Right. And uh, But thank you.